Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our next example of how to apply the mesh analysis method to solve for the currents in, on this, in the circuit. Notice again that we have voltage sources and voltage sources typically lend themselves to using the mesh analysis method. Let's follow the steps and see how to do this. Assign currents for each of the branches. So we have three branches here. Let's say that this here is I1. Let's call this I2 and let's call this I3. Based upon the voltage sources here, it does look like the currents will probably flow in this direction and down here. I'm going to change the arrow for I2 in the opposite direction. I'm assuming that that will be the more correct direction for the current I2. Now the next step is to assign the mesh currents for each of the meshes. There's two of them. There's one here, there's one there. You don't really care how everything is laid out in the circuit. You simply say, okay, let's call it clockwise for I1 and let's call it clockwise for I2. It doesn't really matter. We will find out what I1, I2, and I3 for the branch currents are later on in the problem. The next thing we want to do is apply the Kirchhoff voltage law to obtain the equations for each of the meshes. We're going to sum up all the voltages, the voltage rises and the voltage drops around each of the loops or each of the meshes. Starting at this corner, moving in a clockwise direction, crossing over the voltage source right here for mesh one. We're going to sum up all the voltages. They're going to add up to zero. And the first one is plus 15 for the voltage source. Here we move in the same direction across the resistor as the mesh current, that's a voltage drop, minus two, the resistance times I1. Then we come down this branch right here. Notice it's a voltage drop relative to I1, that's minus. 12 times I1, but since I2 is in the opposite direction, we need to subtract I2 because that will be a voltage rise. This negative times this negative makes that product a voltage rise across a 12 ohm resistor based on the mesh current I2. We come down here, then across a 4 ohm resistor in the same direction as the mesh current I1, that's a voltage drop, minus 4 times I1, and all that adds up to 0 volts. That's our first equation. Now for a second equation, we use the second mesh, the second loop there, mesh two, the sum of all the voltages add up to zero. Starting from this corner, going across this resistor, that's a voltage drop relative to I2, minus 12 times I2, but relative to the mesh current I1, that's in the opposite direction as I1, that's a voltage rise, so we have to subtract minus I1. This minus 12 times this minus one makes that a voltage rise. Coming around the corner across a 9 ohm resistor, that's minus 9 times I2, the mesh current I2. Then going across the voltage source from positive to negative, that's a voltage drop of 18 volts. Going across a 3 ohm resistor, that's minus 3 times I2, another voltage drop, the resistance times the mesh current. All that should add up to zero. I now have my two equations, which allow me to solve for the two unknowns I1 and I2. To do that, I want to then produce a set of linear equations, which means I'm going to collect all the I1s and the I2s together. The first equation then becomes minus 2I1, minus 12I1, that's minus 14I1, minus 4I1, that's minus ooh, 2 plus 12, plus 4, that's minus 18I1. Adding all the I2s together, Minus 12 times minus 2, or minus I2, that's a plus 12 I2. And I have a plus 15 volts, goes to the other side, the equal sign becomes a minus 15 volts. There's my first equation in terms of I1 and I2. For the second equation, minus 12 times a minus I1, that's a plus 12 I1. Have a minus 12 I2, minus 9, that's minus 21, minus 3, that's minus 24. I2, and that equals a minus 18, 18 volts going to the other side becomes a plus 18 volts. There's my two equations. And when you look at it, the algebraic method of solving those two equations is definitely the way to go. We've now reduced this to a set of linear equations. That's step number four. Step number three, we apply the KVL rule. And now step number five, we're going to solve these two equations. And the best way to do that is algebraically. When I take my first equation, and I multiply that equation times two, then this becomes a plus 24i2, I have a minus 24i2, when I add that together, the i2s drop out. So repeating this equation over here, I get a minus 36i1, 
a plus 24i2 equals a minus 30. Then I take these two equations and I add them together. When I do, I get minus 36 plus 12 is a minus 24i1. The i2s drop out and then minus, I t minus 18 plus uh, a plus 18 minus 30 is a minus 12. Notice then that if I divide both sides by minus 24, I get I1 is equal to 0 0.5 amps, a half amp for I1. That allows me now to solve for I2. So taking this equation, uh, do I need, no, I'll take this equation right here. The numbers are slightly smaller. I'm going to solve this equation for I2 to find mesh current I2. 12 I2 is going to be equal to a plus 18i1, because when I move the minus 18i1 to the other side, it becomes plus, and minus the 15. Dividing both sides by 12, I get i2 is equal to 18i1 minus 15 divided by 12. And now that I realize that i1 is equal to 0.5, let me substitute that in. I get i2 is equal to 18 times 0 0.5 minus 15 divided by 12. That's a 9. 9 minus 15 is a minus 6. I2 is equal to minus 6 over 12, which is equal to minus 0 0.5. So it looks like I2 is a minus 0 0.5 and I1 is a plus 0 0.5, which means that the direction of I2 is opposite to what the current really is. It's really in the opposite direction, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter because ultimately what we're trying to find is we're trying to find I1, I2, and I3, the three branch currents. So I come over here and I tell myself that I1 must equal the mesh current I1 because they're both in the same direction. And since I1 is equal to a half amp, I can then say that the branch current I1 is equal to one half of an amp. I2 is equal to the opposite direction of I2 here. So the branch current I2 is in the opposite direction of the mesh current I2. So I can say that I2 is equal to the negative of the mesh current I2. And the mesh current I2 is a negative 0.5. So it's minus times the minus 0 0.5 amps, which is equal to a positive 0.5 amps, which means that according to this drawing here, the circuit, we have a half amp moving in this direction, a half amp moving in this direction, joining I3, and it would make sense that I3 should then be the sum of those two, making that equal to one amp. Let's find out and see what it is. We can say that I3 is equal to, well, it's in the same direction as I1, and it's in the opposite direction as I2, so I have to subtract an I2 from that. I1 is equal to 0 0.5 amps, and the mesh current I2 is a negative, so minus, a minus 0 0.5 amp does indeed add up to 1 amp. So we have 1 amp of current through the middle branch and a half amp current going through the outside two branches. And that's how we find the currents using the mesh analysis method. It's a very quick method, it's a very easy method, and what it does do for us, that if we were to uh, solve this using the Kirchhoff rules, it would require three equations and three unknowns, but by using the mesh analysis uh, method, we can reduce that to two equations and two unknowns by using the mesh currents. And that's how it's done.